You? You're the fall colors kind. The let's take the long trail kind. The immerse yourself in nature kind. The teach a new generation to love and preserve it too kind. The cozy cup of coffee on a crisp autumn day kind. The adventurous kind. The friendly kind. The local culture seeker kind. And simply the kind. Kind. You're the check out visit parkcity.com right now kind. Park City, Utah. For the mountain kind. When you vacation with Norwegian Cruise Line, every day is a new day. Get a taste for Barcelona, then savor incredible dining back on board one day. Connect to ancient history in Athens, and then disconnect in our spa another day. Wherever the sea breeze takes you, come aboard and experience a different tomorrow with Norwegian. Visit ncl.com, call your travel advisor, or 1-888-NCL-CRUISE. Norwegian Cruise Line, ships registry, the Bahamas and USA. The rest of my life gon' start today. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Halloween Podcast. I am your host, Lyle Perez, and today is day five of our Haunted America tour as we are going to every single state. We are talking about 10 different haunted locations every single day all the way up until Halloween. It's a great time so far, guys. We've done a lot of good states, Alabama, Arkansas. Uh, we've done all of the A's basically, so now we're in the C's because today we're traveling to the Golden State, which is California. This used to be my former state now that I'm here in Tennessee, so uh, I can't wait to see what California has in store because we all know California is known for its sun-soaking beaches, towering redwoods, Hollywood glamour, and all of the other craziness that California has. So buckle up and join me as we explore 10 of the most haunted locations in California. Let's start our journey in San Jose, where we find one of the most famous haunted houses in the world, the Winchester Mystery House. This sprawling mansion was built by Sarah Winchester, the widow of William Winchester, the heir to the Winchester Rifle Fortune. Sarah believed she was cursed by the spirits of those killed by Winchester rifles, and to appease them, she embarked on a continuous construction project that lasted 38 years until her death in 1922. The house is a labyrinth of oddities, with staircases leading to nowhere doors opening into walls, and hallways that twist and turn unexpectedly. The design was meant to confuse the spirits that Sarah believed were haunting her. Visitors to the Winchester Mystery House have reported a wide range of paranormal experiences. Shadowy figures have been seen roaming the halls, disembodied voices whisper into the darkness, and sudden cold spots are felt even on warm days. Some have even encountered the ghost of Sarah Winchester herself, wandering the halls, seemingly lost in the maze she created. One of the most active areas is the seance room, where Sarah allegedly communicated with the spirits to receive instructions for the house's ongoing construction. The Winchester Mystery House is open for tours, where you can explore its haunted halls and experience the eerie atmosphere firsthand. Next up, we head to Long Beach to board the Queen Mary, a retired ocean liner that's now permanently docked and operates as a hotel and museum. The Queen Mary has a storied history, having served as a luxury cruise liner and a troop ship during World War II, earning her the nickname the Grey Ghost. But it's the ship's haunted reputation that draws many visitors. The Queen Mary is said to be one of the most haunted ships in the world, with more than 150 spirits reported to be on board. 
One of the most famous is John Henry, a crewman who was crushed to death by a watertight door in the engine room. His ghost has been seen wandering the lower deck, and visitors have reported hearing his cries echoing through the ship's corridors. The engine room, where the accident occurred, is a hot spot for paranormal activity. Visitors have felt an overwhelming sense of dread in the room, and some have seen shadowy figures darting between the massive machinery. Another well-known ghost is that of a young girl named Jackie who drowned in the ship's second-class pool. Her laughter can be heard near the (laughs) pool area, and some have even seen her ghostly figure playing by the water. Jackie is known to be playful, often interacting with visitors by moving objects or responding to questions with giggles. The Queen Mary offers ghost tours and overnight stays for those brave enough to explore its haunted decks. Our next stop takes us to the heart of Hollywood, where the iconic Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel has been welcoming guests since 1927. This glamorous hotel has hosted countless celebrities over the years, but some of its most famous guests have never checked out. And this hotel has also made its way to the top five most haunted locations in America, according to the Halloween podcast. One of the most famous spirits is that of Marilyn Monroe herself, who was said to haunt the suite where she often stayed during her rise to stardom. Guests have reported seeing her reflection in the mirror, only to turn around and find no one there. Others have seen her ghostly figure dancing in the hotel's ballroom, still glamorous as ever. Some who stay in her former suite report feeling her presence, with unexplained drifts of cold air and the faint scent of her favorite perfume filling the room. Another well-known ghost is that of actor Montgomery Clift, who stayed at the hotel while filming From Here to Eternity. Clift's spirit is said to haunt room 928, where he's been seen pacing the halls, rehearsing his lines, and playing his trumpet. Guests who have stayed in his room have reported hearing the sound of trumpets playing softly in the distance, as well as feeling an unseen present watching them. The Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel is still open for business, offering both luxury and the chance to encounter one of its ghostly residents. From Hollywood, we're traveling north to the infamous Alcatraz Island in San Francisco Bay. Alcatraz, once a maximum security federal prison, housed some of the most notorious criminals in American history, including Al Capone, and Machine Gun Kelly. The prison closed in 1963, but many believe that the spirits of former inmates still linger. Visitors to Alcatraz have reported hearing the clanging of cell doors, disembodied voices, footsteps echoing through the empty corridors. One of the most famous haunted areas is the Hole, a series of solitary confinement cells where prisoners endured extreme isolation. Guards and visitors alike have reported feeling an overwhelming sense of dread when entering these cells, and some have even seen shadowy figures moving through the darkness. In the old hospital wing where Al Capone was treated for syphilis, visitors have reported hearing moaning and even catching glimpses of a ghostly figure in hospital gowns. The island's foggy and desolate atmosphere only add to the eerie feeling that something or someone is watching. Alcatraz is open for tours, and while you explore its cold and damp halls, you might just encounter one of the prison's lingering spirits. For the next 15 seconds, picture yourself in a small town. Historic buildings with galleries, restaurants, micro distilleries, forested ridgelines, and wide alpine meadows. Friendly locals and leaves of a thousand colors floating on the breeze. And 
If you're not quite ready to leave this fantasy, chances are you're our kind. And you should check out visitparkcity.com right away. Park City, Utah, for the mountain kind. In San Diego, we find the Whaley House, often referred to as one of the most haunted houses in America. Built in 1857 by Thomas Whaley, this house served as a family home, a courthouse, and even a general store. But the land it was built on had a dark past. It was once the site of public executions. The most famous ghost in the Whaley House is that of Yankee Jim Robinson, who was hung on the property before the house was built. His spirit is often seen on the stairs, where he's been heard stomping up and down, as if still protesting his fate. Visitors have reported feeling a heavy, oppressive atmosphere when they enter the house, as if they're being watched by unseen eyes. Some have seen the ghostly figure of Thomas Whaley himself, often in the parlor or near the fireplace, his stern face appearing briefly before fading into the shadows. Visitors have also reported seeing the ghosts of Thomas Whaley's wife, Anne, and their children, who died tragically at a young age. The sound of a crying baby has been heard in the nursery, and some have seen the apparition of a young girl playing with a ball in the hallways. The Whaley House is open to the public, offering tours that delve into the home's haunted history and the spirits that still reside there. Next, we travel to Riverside to visit the historic Mission Inn, a sprawling hotel that dates back to the late 1800s. The Mission Inn is a stunning example of Mission Revival architecture, but is also known for its ghostly inhabitants. One of the most famous spirits is that of Frank Miller, the hotel's original owner, who was said to still watch over his beloved inn. Guests and staff reported seeing his ghostly figure dressed in period clothing, often in the hotel's chapel or near the lobby. Miller's ghost is known to be protective of the inn, often appearing when renovations or changes are being made, as if to ensure that his legacy is preserved. Another well-known ghost is that of a bride who reportedly took her own life on her wedding day. Her spirit has been seen wandering the hotel in her wedding gown, her face hidden by a veil. Some guests have even heard her sobbing softly in the dead of night, and those who have seen her describe a deep sense of sorrow and longing emanating from her presence. The Mission Inn is open to the public, so next time you're in Riverside, why don't you go ahead and check in? You might catch a glimpse of one of these ghosts. Our next stop takes us to the legendary Chateau Marimont in Los Angeles, a historic hotel that has been a haven for celebrities since it opened in 1929. The Chateau Marimont has a reputation for discretion, but it's also known for its ghostly residents. One of the most famous spirits is that of actor John Belushi, who died in the Bungalow 3 of the hotel in 1982. Guests who have stayed in the bungalow have reported strange occurrences such as lights flickering, objects moving on their own, and even the feeling of being watched. Some have seen Belushi's ghostly figure lounging on the sofa, his familiar features unmistakable. His presence is often accompanied by the faint sound of laughter or music, as if he's still enjoying the Hollywood lifestyle. Another well-known ghost is that of a woman in a flowing white dress who is often seen in the hotel's hallways or sitting in the lobby, her face turned away from onlookers. Some believe she was a starlet who met a tragic end, and her spirit remains at the hotel, forever waiting for her big break. The Chateau Marimont is still open for business, offering both luxury accommodations and the chance to experience one of its famous ghostly residences. From the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, we travel 
to the desolate Bodie Ghost Town in the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Once a thriving mining town in the late 1800s, Bodie is now a ghost town frozen in time, with many of its buildings still standing as they were over a century ago. Bodie is said to be haunted by the spirits of former residents who met tragic ends in the harsh conditions of the Wild West. Visitors have reported seeing ghostly figures peering out of the windows of abandoned buildings, hearing phantom footsteps on the wooden sidewalks, and feeling an icy chill even on the hottest days. One of the most famous spirits is that of a little girl who is often seen near the cemetery, her laughter echoing through the deserted streets. Some visitors have reported feeling a heavy, oppressive presence as if they've been followed by unseen eyes. Bodhi is also known for its curse, which supposedly affects many who take something from the town, even a small rock. Those who have taken souvenirs have reported a string of bad luck, which only ends when the item is returned. The Bodhi Ghost Tour is open to visitors, offering a glimpse into the past and a chance to experience its haunted history. Next up, we're at the legendary Hotel Del Coronado in Coronado, just across the bay from San Diego. This historic beachfront hotel, built in 1888, is known for its stunning Victorian architecture and luxurious accommodations, but it's also famous for the tragic tale of a young woman named Kate Morgan. In 1892, Kate Morgan checked into the hotel alone under mysterious circumstances. She was found dead five days later on an exterior staircase with a gunshot wound to the head. Her death was ruled a suicide, but the circumstances surrounding her demise remain unclear. Guests who stay in room 3327, the room Kate occupied during her stay, have reported strange occurrences such as flickering lights, cold spots, and the sound of footsteps pacing the room. Some have even seen the ghostly figure of a woman in a black dress, believed to be Kate, standing by the window gazing out at the ocean as if waiting for someone who will never arrive. The hotel staff have also experienced paranormal activity throughout the property, including items moving on their own, the sound of soft whispers, unexplained breezes in otherwise still rooms. The Hotel Del Coronado remains one of California's most luxurious destinations, offering guests a chance to experience both the elegance and a touch of the supernatural. Our final stop takes us to the Glen Tavern Inn in Santa Paula, a historic hotel that dates back to 1911. The Glen Tavern Inn was once a popular destination for Hollywood stars, but it's also known for its ghostly residents. One of the most famous spirits is that of Calvin, a cowboy who is said to haunt room 307. Calvin was reportedly shot to death in a poker game gone wrong, but his ghost has been seen pacing the halls, dressed in his cowboy attire. Guests who have stayed in room 307 have reported hearing the sounds of gunshots, feeling cold spots, and even seeing Calvin's ghostly figure standing at the foot of the bed. Some have woken up to find Calvin sitting in the room's armchair, watching them with a stern, silent gaze before vanishing. Another well-known ghost is that of a woman in a red dress, who is often seen in the hotel's lobby or sitting at the bar. Some believe she was a former actress who met a tragic end, and her spirit remains at the inn, forever longing for the limelight. She's known to be flirtatious, often appearing to male guests and leaving behind the scent of roses. The Glen Tavern Inn is open to guests, offering a comfortable stay and the possibility of a ghostly encounter. And there you have it, guys. That is a look at California, 10 haunted locations. Man, that was a, that was a good one, especially for my, uh, for my old state. 
which some of these places I've never been before. Uh, I Believe it or not, I've never been to the Winchester Mystery House, even though we've had plans to go numerous times. I lived in Riverside County, but I never made it to, uh, what was it, uh, the Mission Inn. I never made it to there to kind of see if I can experience anything. But uh, I kind of wish I would have now. But I, I, you know, the the Whaley House, I have been to the Whaley House, but it was a long, long time ago uh, in, in San Diego. But yeah, it was nice to, to kind of do a lot of research for these haunted places, places that were from my old stopping grounds in California. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for hanging out with me as we took a look at these 10 haunted locations. If you have any questions, comments, or want to suggest anything for a future show, please send me an email at Podcast at gmail.com. Sorry, my brain's a little bit fried right now because I've been recording so many of these episodes all in one day. If you're enjoying the Halloween podcast, please, please, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving us a five-star review wherever you're listening to this podcast. Believe me, they really do help. Please also go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Halloween podcast. I really want those numbers to start growing, guys. I've been working really hard on these shows so uh, to give you guys some good content and hopefully uh, hopefully get the, the Halloween podcast to the next level, basically. But all right, guys, I will see you again tomorrow for a look at, uh, I think we're doing uh, Colorado. We're doing Colorado next, guys. So come back tomorrow. Ten more haunted locations in the state of Colorado. I'll see you then. Have a good night. For the next 15 seconds, picture yourself in a small town. Historic buildings with galleries, restaurants, micro distilleries, forested ridgelines, and wide alpine meadows. Friendly locals and leaves of a thousand colors floating on the breeze. And if you're not quite ready to leave this fantasy, chances are you're our kind. And you should check out visitparkcity.com right away. Park City, Utah, for the mountain kind.